And in comes this young man in a three-piece suit straight from Oxford. And I don't think anyone was surprised when he became a prominent public intellectual and an advocate for all seasons for the pro-life movement. He's an academic and a public intellectual, deeply committed to building a genuine culture of life and preparing the next generation to kind of carry that torch. You see him in any debate, he looks like he's having as much fun as he would be having, you know, drinking with friends. But he is also deeply generous. He sees this as an act of friendship on both sides. And so people who deeply hate his views often really can't help liking him. He exercises his talents, uh, his gifts, far beyond Princeton University in speaking up in service to the church. Bluegrass, West Virginia, the Catholic natural law tradition, philosophy of law, Plato's gorgeous, that's all Robbie. One thing that's remarkable about Robbie is his amazing capacity for friendship. And I think this is also part of what enables him to you know, reach across ideological lines and develop friendships with people like Cornell West. Brother Robbie is the real thing. No fakery, he's not phony, he's not a fraud. He's the real thing. Even when he's wrong, he's still the real thing. And I love him. I was recruited into the pro-life movement by my mother in the early 1970s. And as I went off to college, I became interested in the philosophical questions that surround abortion. Of all the questions that I've addressed in my scholarship in moral and political philosophy and philosophy of law, the most prominent ones have been those having to do with life and death. I was so blessed to study philosophy of law at Oxford with two great masters, Joseph Raz and John Finnis. Both of them put the highest possible premium on logical precision and analytical rigor. And really that has made possible the whole of my success in academic life. But the single greatest influence in my life is certainly my father. He is my hero. He did not go to college. He was an infantryman in Normandy and Brittany. When I was 12 years old, I watched my father rush into a burning building to rescue a paraplegic man in a wheelchair. And it wasn't just physical courage that I saw in my dad, it was moral courage. I think he sometimes wonders what I'm gonna do when I grow up and finally get a job. He just sent me off to kindergarten one day and I never left. You can't get to the truth of the matter without considering the best that can be thought and said on the competing sides of the question. This is precisely how St. Thomas Aquinas proceeded in his own work. Many of the positions that I hold and defend presuppose a certain view of how it is that we know. And Christians have an especially intense obligation to be truth seekers because our Lord himself is the truth, what we ultimately seek but you really can't be, in the end, consistently a determined truth seeker if you're not going to be a courageous truth speaker. So it's a package. Fearlessness and courage were the first ideas I associated with him when I read about him and when I first observed him. I remember thinking to myself, you know, I share these views and so on, but here you are not just defending them in the public square, but then inviting, almost goading, people who disagree with you into coming to debate about them. Each time Robbie talks, he reminds me a little bit of Malcolm X. He says what he means and he means what he says. Now we struggle over abortion when life begins. We struggle over issues in foreign policy, but at the deepest human level, it's hard to find somebody who has his kind of integrity, genuine concern for others. At a certain early stage in his college career, he took a course where he read Plato's Gorgias, and he said he had a profound intellectual conversion where he realized the point of an argument is not to win. The point of an argument is to reach the truth. What makes 
Robbie George's classroom so extraordinary is that he welcomes debate and that he actually wants to expose the students to different points of view. Now, I wish I had the level of charisma that Robbie has in the classroom, but I do try to imitate his Socratic style, which he uses both in lectures and in seminars. So he really has faith in the capacity for people who are open-mindedly seeking the truth to come to that through reasons and argument and evidence. He teaches generation after generation of Princeton students about the essence of the American idea. And in the very process, he stands for the proposition that it's only when we recognize the absolute value of human life that the other aspects of life as it is lived take on their truest value and importance. You get on Princeton's campus and you realize one of the most well-respected people, very widely regarded as being deadly brilliant, is deeply pro-life. That by itself changes your sense of the options, the intellectually respectable options for really smart people who interrogate their views. It's not that students have encountered the arguments, the truth of the dignity of every human life. It's that they've never actually heard the arguments. Of all the pro-lifers, he has given the most time and energy to bringing along not just one or two people, but a whole generation of well-equipped pro-life leaders, not only intellectually, but the manner and the love of one's fellow human beings that enables that message to break through even the hardest hearts and the most closed minds. Notre Dame has both an opportunity and a responsibility to help the cause by highlighting and elevating the achievements of pro-life heroes. So it's especially appropriate for Notre Dame to be honoring someone like Robbie George and his contributions to this cause. St. Paul says, speak the truth in love, and that's something that Professor George is a great example of. A man from West Virginia heard a call to seek excellence in his life, to be a great promoter of virtue. So for Notre Dame, perhaps the most recognizable Catholic institution in this country, to honor Robbie, that's outstanding. The Evangelium Vitae Medal recognizes the breadth and diversity of the pro-life movement. And in choosing someone like Robbie George, who wears so many hats, this is a perfect exemplar of how broad-based the movement is, how diverse the movement is, and the secret of its effectiveness after all these years. All we've got to do is speak the truth out loud, have the courage to speak the truth out loud. And its own luminosity, its own splendor will draw people to it. Now this is a great encouragement. I draw hope from this.